Hi, this is Melissa Connolly from CalSWAC. Thank you for joining me for this um, recorded webinar overview of the critical thinking and assessment curriculum for Common Core 3.0, the uh, revised Common Core training for new child welfare social workers in California. Um, I want to um, start out by just giving some acknowledgments and then um, a little orientation to what we're doing, and then we'll get started going through the materials. Um, I'm going to be on the webinar this morning with Amy Rogers, and I want to give a big thank you to Amy for her work on um, developing these curricula with us. She did a lot of work with um, finalizing, streamlining, editing, and making sure that the curricula makes sense. Um, Amy is a MFT a board certified art therapist and the training chief for Vermont uh, for the Economic Services Division. So we're really grateful to have her looking over these curricula with us today. And in just a few minutes, I'm going to hand it over to her to go over the classroom curriculum for critical thinking. But first, I want to just take a minute to thank uh, a few other people and give you an orientation to the, um, the materials for review. So um, we will be reviewing the assessment block curricula for Common Core 3.0. And all the materials are posted on the CalSWEC website. And you can see the uh, web address there on your screen. Um, it, you can, I'll give you a minute if you want to take down that web address, http calswec.berkeley.edu common core 3.0. But I'll let you know also that you can Google um, CalSWEC common core 3.0, and it's the first um, result that you get in that Google search. Um, I'm going to go to the website now just to kind of give you an orientation to what materials are available there. Um, so you can see that we have on our website here, this, this is a web page devoted to the stakeholder review of content, which you're currently participating in, so I thank you. Um, you can see that there's a link to my email address if you have any questions or need to contact me about the materials. Um, there here are some links to some live webinars that you can participate in if you want to be able to be more interactive and give feedback directly in a webinar. Um, these webinars are all the same and will provide a complete overview of the materials in the assessment block. Um, and just so you have a clear idea of what the assessment block entails, it's uh, four classroom modules, uh, three um, e-learning modules, and two field activities. Uh, this uh, webinar that you're watching um, will soon be linked here. It's the Critical Thinking and Assessment Classroom Module. We're recording it now. Once it's recorded, I'll upload it, and it will be linked there. So this will have been where you found it. Um, once you review this webinar, you can scroll down and find the materials here that we're going to be discussing. There's a trainer guide, trainee content, and a PowerPoint that you can access and look at more closely. Um, you'll then be able to uh, use a link that will be live here starting on Monday to fill out a survey and um, give us feedback about the materials. Um, I want to say thank you to a group of people who have participated in the development of these materials. It really has been a, a project that has been contributed to by many people all across the state. Um, the first person I want to say thank you to is Lisa Molinar at Shared Vision Consultants who developed the bulk of the content for the curricula that you'll see in the assessment block. Um, she put together the content for us, uh, and then um, Amy and I have been working with it over the past few weeks to um, get it into the formats that you'll see. Um, but before that, we had some feedback um, all along the way from our content development oversight group, which included Margot Henson, Irene Becker, Soledad Caldera-Gamage, 
uh, Joanne Pritchard, Jennifer Cannell, Leslie Zeitler, Donna Toolman, and Michelle Briens. And my apologies if I'm forgetting anyone. Um, the Sea Dog Group has uh, really overseen the development of learning objectives and reviewed the content all along the way. So they've had a, a big hand in making this content what it is today, and um, we're really appreciative to them for that. I also want to thank a group of safety organized practice um, practitioners and trainers who came together a couple weeks ago to give feedback about the materials and help us infuse safety organized practice concepts um, throughout the, the curricula. So thanks to Jean Norman, Joanne Pritchard, Betty Hanna, Veronica Pipers Jefferson, Andrea Sobrato, Irene Becker, uh, Teresa Solomon Billings, Jennifer Cannell, and Kim Jardina. Your help was um, really appreciated and I think has made a big difference in these materials. Um, so at this point, I'm going to um, turn it over to Amy. And what we'll do is uh, we'll take a look at the trainer guide for the um, critical thinking and assessment curriculum. It's a half-day classroom module. And Amy's going to go over the trainer guide with us, and then we'll look at each activity. And then I think after we go through the trainer guide, we'll just take a quick look at the trainee content so you can see um, what happens there. Are you with me, Amy? I am. All right, great. I'm going to um, click open the trainer guide and then expand it so it's big enough for folks to see. And then we'll just start going through it. Great. So, of course, the table of contents. Okay. <laughs> uh, acknowledgments, which is some of the things that Melissa just went over. Um, and then it has an introduction, which it goes over um, the information about the Common Core, general information about the Common Core curricula, and then it talks about the guides and CalSWEC. Um, then it goes over the learning objectives. So um, each of the trainings have their own learning objectives, and they're split into three categories, knowledge, skills, and values. And then these are corresponded to um, aspects of the lesson plan, which you'll see later. Uh, there's also an agenda, which is a simple outline of the training that has breaks and lunches. Um, there's also the lesson plan, which is the suggested lesson plan, so more, um, a more detailed explanation of a day. Uh, there's also the uh, evaluation protocols and the training activities, which are only listed in the trainer's guide, um, which we'll go over each one for each segment. There's also supplemental materials that are listed, um, and those may be handouts or posters or other types of things um, for the trainings. Uh, the references and bibliography that's particular to each training um, that we'll go over. Uh, the materials checklist, which is important to make sure you look at that, even though it's at the back of the trainer guide, look at it before the training so that you make sure you have all the materials you need. And then, of course, any posters that you might need. Then we have tips for training the curriculum. Um, and so this training is a half-day class, um, and so it talks about um, the importance of linking critical thinking to assessment. It's also highly recommended that trainers take one of the Harvard implicit bias tests, and there's a link here for people to take those. Um, and then it will help you when you're talking about bias um, with the trainees. It's also recommended that you may you know, ask the, trainer, the trainees or talk to them about taking it after they take this course. Um, and from what Melissa says, it's a pretty interesting um, test. Yeah, and highly then, recommended, yes. yes. <laughs> I'm going to take it after this. Okay, good. <laughs> and then it talks about um, content for this curriculum that was developed by the NCCD and the Northern Tra California Training Academy um, related to the safety organized practice um, approach that Melissa mentioned as well. I want to say a little word about the evaluation protocols. Our macro evaluation team and our content development oversight group are, are still working on um, defining the evaluation protocols for each of the curricula. I do expect that this particular half-day module will end up not having an evaluation component, but we have this um, placeholder here just in case. 
So here is the agenda, which as we said, lists each segment in their name and then the time for each as well as for the break. And because it's only a half day, there's just the one break. And then here are the learning objectives. Um, and then the detailed suggested lesson plan. So um, on the left it talks about the segments and the amount of time. Um, what the activity is for that segment as well as on the right, the methodology and learning objectives with corresponding PowerPoint slides. So the first segment, segment one, is an introduction to the training. Um, so this is where the trainer would welcome the participants to the training and introduce them to the agenda and goals um, also, if needed, mentioning logistics and uh, group agreements. I want to thank Betty Hanna for sharing with us her group agreement um, starting point uh, that she uses as a recommendation that trainers can use if they like. It's definitely not a required thing and shouldn't be needed for every single class because usually um, trainers are training a cohort who have been together. Um, but this is a great um, starting point for group agreements for any training. So thank you, Betty. And then the second segment um, is the introduction to Maria's family, um, Maria being one of the scenarios. Um, so here the trainees will read a scenario, and after listing their worries that they have about the scenario in their small groups, They'll answer a scaling question as to how worried they are about the family. And you can see the slide there that shows the scale. The trainer will then tie this discussion to the larger group, asking if this is evidence of critical thinking. Uh, the trainer will then introduce the steps in the critical thinking process by going over each of the four steps with an example of each one, which is listed right here. And those of you who have reviewed the Child Maltreatment Identification Curriculum may recognize the steps in this critical thinking process. As I said when we did the overview of that, um, <clears throat> we really are sort of um, trying to lay this as kind of a framework for critical thinking and encouraging people to have that consultation, to have some reflection about feelings and biases, to gather information from multiple sources and to consider alternate explanations. Uh, segment three is what is critical thinking? And here the trainer will actually define uh, critical thinking for the trainees and then disp discuss the aspects of um, different parts of it, so rational, fact-based, and open-minded pieces. Um, and in the bottom of this segment, we do have key points for the trainer, which we haven't had yet in, in this training. So the key points are important things for the trainer to look at beforehand and integrate into the training. Um, and so here uh, the key points ask that the trainer mention consultation and fact checking, which are obviously important parts of the critical thinking process. Right. I want to um, say a little bit about the key points concept here. It's new for our curricula in uh, Common Core in California, and it's part of our shift from uh, lecture-based training to activity-based training. So we don't have um, – people who are familiar with our current curricula will know that what we currently have is for each slide we have a, a pretty um, firmly established speech that the trainer gives. And we've really tried to move away from that and have the trainer be a facilitator for a group activity rather than a lecturer. Um, but we did have key concepts that we wanted the trainer to still be able to convey during the activity. So we've listed these as key points for trainers here. I think in one of the other curricula we have it just as key points. Um, we'll need to straighten that up and figure out which one we want to call it for sure in the end. But this is a new way of, of building curricula for us, so I'm excited about that. Uh, segment four has to do with avoiding errors in critical thinking. Um, and in this activity, the trainer will identify what critical thinking is not, asking the participants to complete a worksheet that lists opposite behaviors from those. They want them to list opposite behaviors from the ones that are listed there. 
and then process the answers as a group. Um, the key points in this section um, is for the trainer to discuss consultation, teaming, reflective practice, understanding bias, and their importance in decision making. And here is a link here too for the Harvard Implicit Bias Test. Uh, so segment five is fast forward Maria's family. Uh, so fast forward referencing um, a, a scenario that's then fast forwarded, so to speak. Uh, so you have information in the future. Uh, so for this activity, there's um, factor bias cards that the trainer will need to print out ahead of time um, that is located at the back of the trainer content. Um, the room will divide up into small groups and sort through the cards, identifying those cards that are facts and those cards that are biases. The trainer will then facilitate a larger discussion as asking questions related to bias and fact. For each card, the group will then decide if they are a worry, a strength, a complication factor, or neutral information. Um, it's important to note that there's no real right or wrong answers in this activity. The important part is having the discussion around them and how people feel about them. Uh, key points for this activity is connected to the identification of bias um, for the trainees and a reflection on their own thought process. Segment six um, is called Building a Critical Thinking Atmosphere. Um, the activity starts with a discussion about critical thinking in their workplace. Um, and the trainer will then define critical thinking and discuss the three basic components of critical thinking, uh, being objective, gathering facts, and reflecting on bias. Uh, the trainer will then facilitate a discussion of blind spots and biases with the trainees. Um, key points to consider for this section um, is a list of reinforcements for a successful critical thinking process. So consultation with a supervisor, gathering and analyzing information, etc. Segment seven um, has to do with minimum sufficient level of care, or MSLC. Um, the activity for this segment involves the trainees reading the fast forward scenario, um, which is a different one. The trainees will then sort through the facts um, into worries and strengths. Uh, the trainer will ensure that there is an understanding of the meaning of MSLC um, amongst all of them so they understand that. Um, and from here, the trainer will discuss the role of standardized assessment and protective capacity in identifying key factors. Segment eight, um, keys to increasing critical thinking. Uh, the trainer will review the common errors that are found in critical thinking using examples from the prior scenarios that they've gone over earlier in the training. Uh, they will then, the trainer will then initiate a discussion with the trainees on how we can avoid these errors. The final slide for this section states what we can do to avoid these errors. And so there's also a discussion involved around that. Um, and key points for this section uh, for the trainer is to facilitate a discussion of how to avoid the errors and stress the importance of consultation, reflection, being open to hearing that you may have a bias. And then segment nine is the wrap up. So here the trainer will reflect on the information learned during this training and then ask the trainees to share their takeaways from the day. Thanks, Amy. Sometimes I'm lagging a little bit behind because I'm making notes about things that um, I want to give feedback on in uh, this curriculum. <laughs> Which maybe other people are doing too as they're listening to you. Um, so uh, I will also say, I should have said it at the beginning, but um, apologies for sometimes there's little pauses in as we um, catch up with what we're doing in this recording. We don't have the capacity to pause the recording and then jump back in. So we just have to go with it as it goes and um, make it work. 
So apologies for that. I was making notes about some questions that I have. Um, so what I think I would like for us to do now is go back to the website and then open up the trainee content and just give people a chance to take a look at that. So I'll make it a little bigger. Um, and you can see we have a, a table of contents just as we did in the trainer guide, the introduction to Common Core information, a specific curriculum introduction with again the link to the Harvard uh, implicit bias test that trainees can take after the module. Um, uh, our um, safety organized practice information and citations. Um, an agenda for the trainees, the learning objectives, and I didn't say when we went over the trainer guide, but these learning objectives have been reviewed by stakeholders um, already and finalized with the content development oversight group. Um, so we feel like these learning objectives are pretty firmly established. It would be great to hear in people's feedback if they think that we haven't adequately covered one of these learning objectives or if they think there's some key information that um, needs to be added, uh, or if there's something that's really contradictory with practice in their county. Um, just so you can see the pieces of the scenario, there's scenario um, part one, which is the introduction to Maria's family. Um, here's our critical thinking process. Uh, here's a worksheet for what critical thinking is not. Uh, scenario part two, more information. This is, these are also the comments that are used in the fact versus bias um, segment. Uh, here's the scenario part three, which is the fast forward segment. Um, here's the worries and strengths worksheet. And our resources, which are not fully filled out yet, the um, bibliography and resources are um, will be finalized after we do the final curriculum revisions that come from this review. So um, this is a half day module. It's, it's not um, a full day, so it's a little bit shorter than some of the other modules. And the goal is really to get um, the trainees thinking about critical thinking, so um, having a process to ensure that they are using uh, critical thinking as they assess situations that they'll come across in child welfare. So hopefully um, this gives them a little bit of a framework to use and is a good introduction into the more in-depth curricula focusing on child maltreatment identification and assessment. Um, so I think that we've covered it. Amy, do you have anything else you want to add? Uh, I don't think so. Great. All right. I'm going to end our recording.